And I'm like, be careful. Them is attacked there. Just get in the car. <laughs> and they, they believe me. They got in the car. And I was like, oh, that shit worked great. And uh, I didn't think nothing of it. But for years behind the scenes, the kids and the wife, as a matter of fact, she's an ex-wife now. But anyway, uh, they... Uh, they believed that all tear deer were attack deer and would fuck you up. I mean, they were treated like they were grizzly bears and shit. And, well, you know, I mean, there's a lot of deer around here. A you get, lot. You get a male it's come like, into your campsite around hmm, October and it's rutting season. <laughs> yeah, you, you know, you better hope there's not a female around because your camp will get fucked up. <laughs> oh, yeah. But they were all afraid that the deer were just going to just randomly attack them and well, after, with the impressive horns. I don't know. I'd believe it after after two deer ate an 18-pack of eggs. I'm like, um, okay, this is like a Stephen King novel. So, you know, like, whatever. But, uh, yeah, and then... Uh, you wake up in the morning and they're on the edge of the camp just looking at you. Right, yeah. <laughs> like, you're looking tasty. We, we've tasted <laughs> blood. But uh, I think it's time we are our species evolves. Right? Yeah, that that was We're like omnivores. That was the end of our trip, and uh, so yeah, um, we're planning another maybe weekend trip, hoping to do like something on this side on in Washington, do some dispersed camping. I don't know. Maybe I, I'm looking at around like Moss Creek Campground, but I'm not. I don't know. I'm not sure yet. But uh, yeah. So it was it was a really good trip. We had a good time. I'm really happy you had a great time. Yeah, yeah. The rodeo I'm not was just really fun. I'm just, I really mean that. No, I, yeah, the rodeo was really fun. Uh, bull riding and the whole nine yards. I mean, it was it was really good. I like rodeos because, as far as athletic events go, they're really easy to understand. Um, like if they have a new event, like so, this was the first year that they've had. Um, at this at this rodeo, this is the first year that they had breakaway rope, breakaway roping, and um, I mean, all you got to do is watch it for like three minutes, and you go, "Oh, okay, I understand the rules." I mean, it's it's just not complicated, <laughs> you know. It's like they have to do this in this amount of time. If they start too early, they get a ten second penalty. All right, go. I mean, <laughs> it's yeah. just really simple to to figure out. So. Yeah, uh, trying to figure out like the rules of soccer, like uh, trying to figure out what the fuck on, on sides is, off sides. Right. Is oh yeah, well, so, modern I mean, you know modern NFL football games. Well, well, oh, yeah. what counts as you know um, roughing the passer, or what counts uh, as um, pass me. interference anymore? You know, yeah. it's like. Yeah. <sighs> but yeah, rodeos are just really easy to understand. Yeah, I'll agree. So. The bull riders are the toughest athletes I know of. Oh, man. Yeah. Bull riders and bronc riders. This guy got bucked yeah. off of a bronc and, like, <laughs> did a flourish in the air and landed on his feet. And, like, just held That's up his hands like like he nailed, like he was in gymnastics yeah. and nailed it. Hell yeah. All right. Well, thank uh, Welcome to... Uh, Pirates of Drynax. Uh, we were just discussing uh, my vacation. I am back. Um, if you are watching on YouTube, be sure to subscribe to our channel. Um, you can even click the little bell thingy, and it'll notify you when we have a new video up. Uh, we would like to see more subscribers. Please uh, subscribe. Um, it would be great if we could see 100 subscribers, um, I don't know, by the end of September. I'd love to see 100 subscribers. But... You know, if you are subscribed, spread the word far and wide. We we love to have people watching. We love to have people commenting. If you're watching on Twitch, uh, scroll down. You should see some tiles there. Uh, if you don't see the tiles, click on my profile image, and the tiles should pop up. Um, each of those tiles is a link to these fine people's websites. And we would like to thank a friend of the Greenwater Guild Hall. <laughs> Uh, these are not sponsorships or partnerships of any kind. They are just products that we really, really like. And tonight we would like to thank uh, the Speechless Bard. Speechless Bard makes beautiful leather products for your tabletop role-playing games, such as 
leather covers for your core rule books. She's got a full line of dice bracelets if you like to show off your geeky side with a bit of jewelry. Um, she has a leather rolling mat that uh, looks like a spell scroll when it is uh, rolled up. Um, she's got a new product that kind of looks like a spell book and when you open it, it's a rolling tray inside. And on the inside cover of the spell book, it's actually a spell slot tracker for those of you that play D&D. Um, she does amazing work and all of it is customizable. You tell her what you want and she does all of the work by hand. She's an amazingly talented artist. Um, if you are ordering um, either for yourself or even if it's, a, especially if it's a gift idea, you're going to want to give yourself a little bit of extra time if you're in the United States because she is over in the UK and it can take a little bit of time to cross the pond. If you are a fan of our Traveler game, we do have a website via Obsidian Portal. Um, the, the adventure log on that side, I was just thinking, like the adventure log on that side is written in the manner of news articles from Traveler News Service. And I was just thinking, like, that's what I was supposed to do today. I was supposed to write another news article and I forgot. Uh, don't worry, it's coming. There will be some news, uh, some new articles going up there. Um, if you enjoy the content, uh, please go to the front page and give us a thumbs up. We do like to see the fan likes, and we hope you enjoy. Where we left off uh, last week, which to me, after being on vacation, feels like a million years ago. I feel like I've been gone for a month. Uh, you guys were in the process of... Um, you're, you're in the middle of your rescue of the townsfolk of Benyam men who were taken uh, by Ogman raiders. Some of them have already, you, you've already seen this, some of them have already been eaten. Um, they were the ones who uh, were of no use to the raiders. Probably either couldn't read or um, didn't understand a tech manual. Um, so they were thrown on the fire pit. Um, and we are in mid-combat, and it is Rexar's turn. Mr. Rexar, you've got two Augment Raiders on you. This Raider in front of you, if I remember correctly, you actually have down on the ground. Um, you have one friendly axe right down on his face. Yeah, you, you, you've got him grappled, but he isn't... Uh, you haven't... You really haven't done much to him. Um, let me... Yeah. Yeah, you haven't done anything to him. You... You've just grappled him. Oh, and, and that was the other thing. Um, that Ox and Ting broke into a ship that they found on the tarmac at the uh, what passes for a starport uh, on uh, Homestead. And come to find out, the ship has a conscious intelligence artificial or conscious intelligence on it. And. Uh, it has allowed them to board the ship. Um, it is owned by Dame Coraline Petrovsky, is what it says. And it flew them to the location and is allowing them to operate the turrets. I believe Ox was in the missile turret and Ting was in the beam laser turret. And, uh, you know, I really should update that um, token for the ship because... No offense to Mongoose, but I hate their rendition of the Empress Morava. The original was just so much prettier. But I digress. So, uh, Rexar, what would you like to do? Bring the axe down on the guy right next to me on the ground. Okay. Do I get a, a, a boon dice? I, yeah, I'm going to say that you get a boon dice because he is already... Um, He's already grappled, so I'm going to give you a boon on that. I have a battle dress on. Uh, be that's... Before you calculate that, hold on just one second. I want to look at something. Something else I forgot to do, but... I wanted to clarify how they're doing... Here we go. Bane and Boon. So, 
So they've expanded their description of Boone and Bane. It does work almost exactly like um, advantage disadvantage in 5e D&D. &D. Um, so if a traveler has helped, such as good tools, competent aids, or other beneficial cir circumstances, they receive a boon. Um, they roll an extra dice during a check and did okay. So yes, you roll three dice, discard the lowest. <coughs> All right, so that's a 14 to hit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that hits. Uh, so, let's see. That is a plus eight to damage and <laughs> is going to be considered an exceptional success. So it's gonna be bad news for him no matter what you do. I rolled real bad, so... And don't forget, you get to add your strength modifier to the damage. Oh. Because you're, you, you're using your your axe, right? So... Yeah. Yeah, yeah that, you add your strength DM to the damage. And you're in battle dress, so... Yeah. Uh, so I rolled bad, only 24. Only? So he's going to take 19. I have, uh, my axe also has 18 4. Oh. Hold on. Whoops. So I'm sorry, you, your damage was 24, you said? Yes. So you don't kill him. However, um, he does pl pass out due to uh, blood blood loss and shock. Um, you bring the axe down, and it is buried deeply in his chest. Like, you, you didn't even swing it down. You just kind of pressed it into him. And uh, he just kind of shudders for a minute and gurgles and passes out. And he's probably going to die fairly soon. But he is done and over with. You have a minor action. Um, if you move, the other guy is going to... I mean, he will get it. He can do a reaction attack on you. But, I mean, he's just got a chain sword. Uh, yeah, if the blood splatters on my face, I'm just going to try oh, and yeah. look at the other guy and start turning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You you are a fright uh, to look at. Chain drive sword. Or no, the other guy has a j chain drive axe. That was right. Uh, okay. So for your action, you start purring. Shenanigans. I'm sure I can get a missile to work this time. <laughs> okay, so yeah, this entire canyon is full of um, debris and dust from the explosion. Um, so, Ox, what are you shooting at? I mean, you, uh, you've got, you've still got the Far Trader and the Safari ship sitting there. Right, and we were shooting at the big ship. The yeah, you were trader. shooting at the far trader. I, I or not, I'm sorry, not far trader. Um, you were shooting at the fat trader. It's a, okay. a type It's a, a type R subsidized merchant. Yeah, we're shooting at the engines in the back. Or I thought that's where the missile was going to go. Well, yeah. Say <laughs> Luffy. So, I want to shoot another one at it. Okay. I know I'm going to do better. And I'm going to move shenanigans. It is doing a strafing type run. 
That's where it's actually at. Up here. Go ahead and make your uh, your turret gunner. Because I mean, it's okay. it's immediate. So. Yeah. So after all the pluses last time, or after all the pluses and minuses, it was a two d six plus one, and I rolled two ones. So here we go. We're going to do better. Two threes. Got a seven. Uh, almost at the end. Well, it wasn't as bad as before. Um, you narrowly miss, and you see that because it's such close range for missiles, you see this missile just kind of glance off of the back hull of the of the fat trader, and it kind of skids into the sand and explodes in, into a cloud of dust once again, just pa just north of the fat trader. Um, oh, wait a minute. Can, can there you you now wait a minute. Points? Well, wait a minute, um, Ox. You're if I remember correctly from last week, you used a minor action to aim. Yes. So that was that plus one calculated into that seven. I believe so because I I was using jack of all trades one to figure out which button to push mostly correctly. Okay. Okay. Good. Could, could the ship itself use one thrust point to stabilize the ship and create a boom or, or something like that? Uh, it could on the next turn, yeah, if that's what you're asking for. Um, yeah. So, Ting, are you doing the same thing? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, it just seems like it's working great for us, you know. I will mention to the, to the ship, uh, like, if you could... If you could stabilize the ship, we would get better shots. You know, we're, we would be a better team if we worked together. And then... Well, if nothing else, missiles blowing up near their ship should keep any of their uh, crew from wanting to reinforce them. Together. Yeah, they're probably not going to want to step out of the ramp at this point. I, yeah, I got a, I got an eight. Because, you know, again, I'm kind of... I'm doing... I'm jacking the trade and uh, aiming. You hit. And, and so... And, so... Oh. You can roll. Uh, you would think that I would have this stuff memorized, but not. I believe it's a D six. I think, yeah, I think because I think it's one D plus one. But let me double check that. It is the wrong chart. There we go. That is correct. It is 1d plus 1 for damage. So, 3. 3 points of, of beam damage. Okay. That is so impressive. Okay. <laughs> um, and so, for both of you, are you using your minor action to try to aim? Yeah. I mean, there's, you're not going to use it for movement, so I would assume that you're trying to, to aim. So, that'll give you a plus 1 on your next attack. Uh, I'm getting the hang of this. I'm getting better. You're getting yeah, closer, I'm, yeah. I'm rocking it, man. I've got this shit down. Captain... Sorry to yell. Beth. Yeah, wait till I put a missile through their portholes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Captain Beth, what would you like to do? Can I see this guy very well? I guess I can move a little bit. Yeah, you might want to move. Yeah, now you can see him, for sure. And... Let's shoot the um, the advanced combat rifle. Okay. Ten. So that would be a plus two to damage, and if you are going burst. Uh, that would be a plus five to damage. Thirteen. Okay. Also, I wanted to let everyone know that there is a recall of Capri Sun. Because some of the pouches got filled with cleaning fluid. Did you guys hear that? 
I did not hear about that. I did hear that, yes. <laughs> It made me think of our game. I thought of it too, really. <laughs> it was deadlier than previously expected. <laughs> Capri Sun using stealth to make its attacks. <laughs> At least we keep it clean. Ah. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> this tastes like bleach. Uh, so you drill him, um, but he does not go down. Uh, yeah. I think he probably has some movement left. I think he only moved like 1.5 meters. Yeah, I'm a more. I'm good. Okay. Ching Shi, what would you like to do? You still have this guy out here. Um, yeah, I'm aiming at him. Yes, which is the eye mark. Right, so I'm going to now shoot him. Go for it. Nine. Ooh, just made it. Plus, oh, plus the end. So is that ten? Yes. So that would be a okay. plus two okay. to damage. Okay. Ooh, yeah, I think he's dead. 18, 24. Ouch. Plus 2 is 26. Okay. And it's AP 6. Oh. Ugh. Okay. So his armor does nothing. Holy shit, that's exactly the amount of points he has. So your bullet goes right through this guy's chest and out the other side, and he just drops completely okay. dead. And then, let's see, Rexar's got it under control. Uh, Captain's got it under control. So I guess... I'm going to stay here in case something surprising happens. And everybody seems to be knowing what they're doing. Make a recon plus intellect check. Uh, yeah. Recon plus intellect. Oh, I am just engorged with victory on that kill. Because I only got seven. Okay. So with a seven... Um, you can see that there are that the prisoners that are in yeah well you can see that the prison so your miss shot had kind of uh unlocked this uh little gate that they had and the prisoners that the people that were being kept in this pen um are kind of at this point now that this guy's dead they're poking their heads out and looking around and and the the dust is starting to settle uh, in this area, but it's still fairly obscured uh, from that mist missile. Uh, okay, can I shout? Can I shout down for them to stay there for just a uh, few more minutes? Sure. So you, as a as a whatever you want to call it, free action. Yeah. So you shout. I, I don't want them to be running around in the cabin in the canyon while we still have gunfire. So just, like, stay down. So you shout out, and you see um, a woman who is, at one point, um, it looks like she was dressed fairly, um, I don't want to say elegantly. She's not wearing, like, a ball gown. She is dressed um far better than the than the rest of the people. The rest of the people look like ranchers and farmers and whatnot. She, on the other hand, is wearing uh, like khaki pants with a racing stripe down the leg into, tucked into the boots. She's got, you know, um, a denim style shirt with the sleeves rolled up with a, a, a kerchief around her neck. And she kind of takes she hears you and takes the 
lead and kind of pulls people back in and just kind of shuts the door and is trying to get people to to uh, take cover and get down as far as they can. Great, perfect. This guy. How healthy is he? Not very. Um, this guy goes over here and kind of ducks down behind his uh, dead buddy and is going to fire his auto rifle at Captain Beck. Let's see. There's a plus one. No, he misses terribly. Um, he should be embarrassed at how badly he misses. This guy is going to bring his chain drive axe uh, down uh, an attempt to bring it down on Rexar's head. And fails with a seven. The um, It swings and it just, you know, shower sparks comes off of Rexar's battle dress. And that is what they do. Ting and Ox make a Recon plus intellect check, and I'm going to allow you to make that with a boon because you are in a ship and you've got sensors and all of that. Nine. Okay. How did Ox do? Hopefully he did a lot better than Nine. Well, Nine's good, but... Oh, okay. Okay. Sorry, I was muted. Oh. Oof. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I did that wrong. It came up. I did that wrong. That was... I rolled a 2 instead of a 2d6. Oh, okay. Okay, I have to remember. That should be the right letters. Well, yeah. not as good as last shot. So, Ting, um, you see that um, three, well, you see four people coming down out of the safari ship. Um, it is uh, a big, big beefy guy uh, with a number of like, it, like on his armor he's got, and he's he appears to be wearing a flak jacket, but there's like feathers and you know pieces of starship and gear like attached as decoration. In front of him, he has a young girl, and there are two guards flanking him that are nervous as hell coming down this ramp. And this, uh, the big guy is like, he's got one hand on the girl's neck and he's waving overhead. And what you appear to see that it looks like he's trying to yell something. Okay. I mean, you can't, uh, you can't hear him, but... Of course. Uh, but did the ship stabilize to give me better aim? Oh, uh, that is that will be a possibility next turn. Okay. Keith Clark, what would you like to do? Well, I can apparently have a clear shot of this guy now. Yes, you do. So I am going to uh, fire him with my laser rifle. Okay. And that is 11. That is a plus 3 to damage. This guy's going to have a really bad day. He is. Hmm. 
Only 13. <laughs> I was expecting more. Well, that may be enough. <laughs> yeah, it's, that's more than enough. Let's see here. And this guy passes out. He is unconscious. Is there anything you'd like to do with your minor action? Um, I think uh, I can't really get down from here, can I? You could if you wanted to move down that, because uh, it is. It's only 10 meters. Um, I mean, it is a sheer, like, cliff, but I mean, it's only 10 meters. If you wanted to make an athletics dex check, I'd allow you to make it down. I'll go for it. Okay. So, is athletics like a strength-based thing, or is it... It's it, it can, oh, ath okay. The athletic skill can be used for either strength, uh, endurance, or dexterity. Yeah, and uh, I got eight. Okay, so that, you can move down uh, to this next level. Cool. And that's only, let's see, uh, yeah, that would put you down on the next level, and then this next one, if you wanted to get down here, this is 20 meters down, so, um, I mean, that would be another athletics dex check to kind of climb down the wall, and that would put you down at the bottom. We are back to Rexar. I'm swinging my axe again. Uh, that is a 12 hit. Jesus. So that is a... Plus 3 strength and plus 3 to melee. That is a plus 4 to damage. Listen, I may not be smart, but I'm good at... Okay, I rolled really good. <laughs> well, luckily, it's got, what, AP5? AP, yeah. AP4? It's a, a reskinned... Uh, static Axe? Static Axe. Yeah. yeah. Uh, ten, uh, 27. Good grief. Listen, I only know how to press the big red button and swing my axe. Oh no, it's a like, you, you do both so well. You say only, but yeah, it's you do both. We're just an expert, that's all. So it's AP6. Um, oh. What is, uh, I'm sorry, how much damage did you do? Uh, 27. I rolled two fives, a six, and a four. Yep, this guy, you swing and... Part him perfectly down the middle? Uh, no, but um, it is uh, a gory mess. You go right through his his uh, flak jacket and drop him in a bloody, gory mess. Rexar, you, are, you're, you and your armor are just covered in blood. I mean... It, at this There's point, no at this point, you're having to reach up and kind of wipe the view plate, uh, view uh, plate on your, on your battle dress because it is just covered. So I have little windshield wipers. Yeah, you need little windshield wipers for all the blood. So you still have a minor action. Um, I don't know what if you would like to go down the ten meters uh, or if you want to move anywhere. I'll jump down the 10 meters. Okay, go ahead and make a uh, athletics dex check. Really? That's what I get to take, guys? <laughs> oh! Uh, that's a, a five. <laughs> Just tuck and roll. Just roll down. 
it's like the cartoon effects where like they hit the ground too hard and they sink into the ground and there's just an outline of my body. So now and this is ignoring armor. You kinda go down this ten meters um in a uh rough and tumble manner and you take five points of damage because you kind of wrench your leg. Ow. It's probably the most damage Rexar has ever taken. <laughs> so, uh, Shenanigans is going to... Well, Shenanigans does her best to um, stabilize the ship, but fails on her piloting check. Um, not terribly bad, but it is an average failure that doesn't grant any bonuses to your attack. Um, so, Ting, um, and, and it is now, you know, with the ship hovering, and she's she's kind of like, you know, rocking back and forth and, and trying to hover, and she's kind of spinning in a circle. Um, but it is clear to both Ting and Ox you guys can both clearly see this guy holding this this young girl's neck and the two guards uh, behind him that are flanking him. Um, and he's still waving his arms and yelling. Cassie, stop it. Ox, what would you like to do? Same as we do every night, Pinky. Try and shoot at their engines. Okay. Uh, same at the, the fat trader? Yep. Okay. Fat Trader's engines, uh, hopefully we got some stabilization, minor action is aiming for the next shot, pushing the button of praying. Okay. Hey, there you go, 13. Okay. Told you I'd put it through the porthole one of these days. Okay, so that is a plus 5 to damage, roll 4d for damage, plus uh, 4d plus 5. 4d6 plus 5. Wow. That's pretty amazing. 11 points. Okay. And five of that was on top of the dice roll. <laughs> okay. So. Okay, that was a dud missile. I hit it. The missile was bad. So, well, no. So, Ting fires a missile. And, and, or, I'm sorry, Ox fires a missile, and, and Ting, you see this. You see this missile hit the cockpit, like right in the viewport, bust through the glass, and you see the missile fly into the ship. And both of you are sitting there kind of like, what just happened? And then you see the entire fat trader go up in a ball of flame and explosions of fire. Um, it, the missile went through the cockpit, straight down through the bridge, and detonated in the fuel stores. And so the fat trader is now shrapnel across the desert. The explosion... Well, I guess we didn't want to tell that one. The explosion is enough that um, it knocks down the the guy and the girl and the two guards and like just knocks them to their knees and there is again a big smoke and dust cloud uh, coming up from uh, this explosion. Ting, what would you like to do? I'm gonna try to shoot the fat guy. Oh shit. Okay. So because he is a small target. Um, and he has a hostage, you would be at a bane to hit. Oh. Well, um, well, I guess, I guess I'll roll another d6 and tell you how bad I fuck this up. Okay. Because I, I got a six already. I, I, I guess I owe you a chance to do worse. So, yeah, can't, can't, can't do it all. Listen, four, nope, it stays at a six. 
Okay. So. Let's see. One, two, three. This is the first time I've missed with it. Still a cocky. Roll 1D plus 1 times 10. All right, so let's see. Roll 1D, right, plus 1? Uh-huh. Times 10. All right. 1 times 10, 10. There you go. Okay. I'm about to type that wrong. No, wait. So you rolled 1D6 plus 1. No, I rolled 1D. Sorry, it's just hold on. <laughs> I'm seated. Hold on. There we go. Uh, I got a six. So 60. 60 points of damage. Oh, oh shit. All right. So the two beam lasers come out and leave a crater at the edge of the boarding ramp where this guy and the hostage and the two guards were. The hostage at, like in a freak uh, chance of luck uh, jumps and rolls at the very last second. She is very badly burned. But she's laying on the ground. Like smoke's coming off of her. I will ask the shenanigans to get a scan lock on the safari ship. Okay. I mean, you know, if I could talk and miss at the same time. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Was, was, was you, if you wouldn't mind, uh, get a lock on the safari ship. Uh, so perhaps we can uh, take it. Uh, I, I think our noble might be on it. Uh, we might have to chase them all the way down to their home planet to get your noble. <laughs> Shenanigans replies uh, that no. Um, she says uh, negative. Uh, Dame Petrosky is in the pen rounding up host, uh, rounding up other hostages oh well then there you go if you wouldn't mind getting a lock on the safari ship so we could uh remove the threat and done yeah uh, yeah, that'll give us a that'll give us either a, a boon or a uh, plus two i forgot which i think but it gives us i think it's a boon it's a it's a plus one to your attack. All right. Well, there, there we go, Ox. We got another plus one for next round as we lay into this safari ship. I'll take it. Yeah. Well, hopefully we can. Hopefully I won't blow it up with one shot next time, and there'll be something to uh, salvage for proper identification and <laughs> that type of stuff. So. Well, I mean, it, you know, maybe we ought to wait to see if it starts powering up, and and maybe we could take this safari ship and. And gift it to the port uh, or the right. planet to gain favor. Well, we, we could sell the ship and parts of it and uh, provide uh, restitution to the poor people. That yeah, something, something tells me we're not going to get a lot off the other ship. Yeah. Oops. Oops. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Well, we removed the threat. We're not violent. On air wire. Clean up the battle. Clean up a piece. Knack, knack, knack. Yeah. <laughs> So we only slightly injured the hostage this time. I just want to point out the last one died eventually. So we're improving. You guys have eliminated the raiders. And shenanigans sets down. Pretty much like right here. Here. We're probably all really shocked, also, <laughs> that a ship showed up and helped. Well, our friends from it. <laughs> well, they they contacted you, uh, so you oh, you knew that they were aboard it. Um, never, 
ignore me. I'm sorry. You're right. It is a pretty fancy ship, from what you understand, so you might be a little shocked. Hold on here. Does does the shenanigans uh, happen to have any uh, programs that would be willing to upload me, like perhaps piloting or something like that? Oh well, we'll get to that in just a moment. Okay, all right. I so, will, I will hush. so you guys, uh, uh, well, the first thing, uh, so uh, Beth, Chingchi, Rexar, and Keith. Make recon plus intellect checks. And you can make those with a boon. I got 11. 13. Oh. Okay. <coughs> Rexar, what'd you get? I got a 10. Okay. So, so all of you drilled it. So you saw the lasers come out and cause this explosion, and you saw the one hostage um, get kind of half flung and half jump, trying to get out of the way. Um, but she's laying on the ground. She's not moving. There's like smoke coming off of her. Um, Beth, did did you want to attempt to do something about that or? Yeah, I want to rush in and, I don't know, put ointment on it. <laughs> only if we had a planet uh, famous or system famous medic on the ship. <laughs> so, so, Beth, go ahead and make a medic plus either intellect or education check. Uh, Twelve. Wow. So that gives her four points back. Um, she, this girl, um, looks like she's around anywhere between the age of fourteen and fifteen. You know, um, she is badly burned, um, and you you patch her up, but she really needs um, she really needs help. Like she needs medical, like a hospital, we, or we've got a, we've got a med bay, right? And so, uh, and I think, hold on, just a second, if I remember correctly. Oh my God, World Twenty, what the fuck? Oh, that's not gonna tell me what I want to have. Shenanigans does as well. Um, and so this kid's like having a hard time breathing and um, the woman that was wearing the khakis with the racing stripe and the and the denim shirt, she comes out and her hair is kind of, you can tell that her hair is, her hair is braided and up in a bun. And she comes out and she rushes over to Beth and she says, uh, here, I'll help you. Let's get her aboard my ship. We have a medical bay. Let's do this. And so this she gets you aboard the ship. She helps you uh, get her uh, get the kid aboard the ship into their medical bay. Um, what the rest of you, I mean, there are these uh, townsfolk that are coming out of this um, pen that are they they act like they're shell shocked. Um, they've clearly been abused. Most of them are injured in some way. Usually, by uh, most of the injuries are by um, a, like a harpoon through the leg when they were taken, or through the shoulder, or whatever. Um, these people are beat up, um, kind of shell shocked. But I mean, this is a far trader. Um, you could, if you wanted to, load them into 
the cargo bay and take them back to town, you could. Do you guys want to do that while I catch people up, or how do you want to do this? Well, we want to thank shenanigans for the help with the missiles and uh, ask shenanigans if I could get an after action report. Any suggestions on being a better missile shooter in the future? <laughs> I'm just gonna, I'm gonna chat with the ship, see if I can get any interesting info out of it. Okay. Um, sh shenanigans um, responds. She um, she doesn't vocally respond. She puts up on a screen a, a screen that just says practice, practice, practice. <laughs> um, what about the rest of you? Are, are you trying to calm these people? What do you What are you guys telling them? I got lots of band and, and med kit. Just hand them out. <laughs> <laughs> so the first thing the first thing I'm gonna do is quietly pop one of the Xanax that Doc says we can hand out to everybody. I love um, but I think I'm just gonna be focused on trying to figure out how to get everybody back and all that. Like logistics. Okay. I would like to go with the team to the safari ship and see if we can claim that. Okay. Who else wants to go check out the safari ship? Anybody? I would like to. Okay. I'll go with the safari ship because they don't die. Okay. So, um, Keith, make a um, make a mechanic plus or mechanic plus intellect or education check. Okay. Okay. So, visually, you guys get into this ship and. It is a dump. So normally a safari ship, what you would expect to see is that a safari ship is damn near nice as a yacht. Um, this is not that. Um, the interior of this ship, a lot of the bulkheads have been removed and or modified in some way. The um, So like there is no trophy lounge. That's been completely removed and the two compartment there are two compartments in a far ship that are basically used um, to store live animals um, those have been pretty much increased in size uh, let me double check I might have oh, but it's, it's jump cable not so, Keith, you do determine that, yes, it is junk capable. Um, as far as whether or not you guys would be interested in keeping this thing, it, it, oh, here we go. What I wanted. So this is the deck plan. Oh, and there was a whole bunch of stuff going on here. Let's all go away. I was say, it seems like we've been here before. Yes. Yes, it does seem that way. Let's see here. So this section here. Why is that not doing what I want to do? There we go. Like I said, all of these bulkheads um, here and here, those have all been removed. Um, and so the number three here is the multi environment space, which would be used for live animals. Pretty much. Three and two are all multi-environment space at this point. Um, and it's not really multi-environment space. It looks like it's set up as slave pens. Um, the launch docking space is empty. There's no launch there. Um, but uh, Keith, you determine that uh, the ship is jump capable, but you wouldn't recommend flying this thing anywhere 
the core containment on the reactor is shoddy at best and pretty much anybody who flies in this thing is taking doses of radiation every time the engines are fired up so oh, nice it um, could so, it could theoretically so, be fixed but i mean you're not going to find your own pirates are not suicidal yeah. We should just set it down in the town. Can we like tow it so that the engines don't have to be fired up or something? I just want to give it to the people. Maybe they can do something with it. They could. Or maybe. I mean, can we repair it enough that it won't kill them before we give it to them? Uh, with the parts that you. It's a cancer factory. You're welcome. <laughs> yes. Yeah, if you want to grow a second head, turn on the engines. Like, um, at least, you know, some kind of, I'm sure, I'm sure Keith can whip up some kind of containment field or something so that at the very least they have an energy source in town that won't lead to it being called tumor death. Can I take its hard drives? Yeah, you could do that. <laughs> so, so Ting, make a um, make an electronics computers plus intellect or education check. Uh -huh. How about a die? So you don't even have to break into these these computers. The, the computers on here look like they have. The security set up by a five-year-old. Um, right. Like, you know, the, the password is password. The login is always guessed with admin yeah. rights, that kind of thing. Um, I'm, I'm sure Devin knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> Those people. <Yeah. laughs> um, it has a full log. Um, this ship has been to Ogma. Um, and... You learn a couple of pieces of information. The first piece of information, and I'm... Hold on. I know this guy's name. I should have memorized this. These guys met an Ogman cheater, uh, chieftain that was trying to... So, you learn Chieftain Hannigan. Um... So Chief Hannigan, and this was before Ox and Ting's time with the group, had hired the group uh, basically to take a group of Ogman raiders to uh, Thief to purchase weapons. And Chief Hannigan's idea was that um, he was going to unite the different raider clans and that Ogma was going to become something big. He had, he had a vision. Unfortunately, Chief Hannigan has uh, ended poorly. Um, he was killed by his son, uh, who wanted to go back to doing things the way they've always done them. And uh, come to find out, the guy that you vaporized with your beam lasers was that son. Wow, well. well. The last video log that you see is that this guy and this 14-year-old girl, that is the chieftain, was, or this, this was their chieftain, was uh, bragging to his uh, raiders about how excellent their raid on Homestead went and that he was taking the sheriff's daughter, Amelia, as his new bride and that she was already carrying his heir she is the girl who is now partially crispified laying in the uh med bay all right good times <laughs> uh well, i mean for not having a turret skill you know i hit i hit two out of three that's, that's pretty good <laughs> I took out a ship. Yeah. Yeah, you know. We, uh, we did great for not having the proper skills to do the job. So, yeah. Ching Shi, make a, um, make a, and this is going to be a weird use of this skill, but I'm going to go ahead and use it. 
Make a tactics plus intellect or education check. So I have tactics naval one. Mm -hmm. So does that mean that the rest of my tactics is zero? Or am I using naval? You can use naval. This, this kind of counts. Mm -hmm. Oh, seven. So the best that you can come up with for, for these people is to kind of load them all into... Um, into the cargo bay and those people that need medical assistance you're kind of triaging them uh, the worst of the worst there's you know enough room that they can sit on a bench in the med bay and maybe be seen uh, but for the most part you're kind of patching people up on the spot in the cargo bay of shenanigans and we'll i'll show you i'll bring that um that that floor plan up here in just a minute, or floor plan, deck plan. Um, so the best that that Keith King and Ox and Rex are, the best that you guys can really come up with, you can't really tow this, this boat without turning the engines on. And even then you wouldn't really, I mean, you're in a gravity well, you're on a planet, so towing it would be impossible. You, you would end up doing more damage than, than it would be worth. Um, but what you could do is you can, I mean, when you get back to town, you can be like, hey, there's a ship. You could go back and you guys can salvage it and do whatever you want with it. Um, that's on you guys. We're leaving it for you. Um, and I'm sure the townspeople would be, you know, thankful after they're done burying people. Um, that's about the best that you could do. I mean, you're, you're not going to be able to tow, I, I believe a safari ship like 200 tons, so it's going to be a bit of a a problem dragging it. Do we find the sheriff's daughter among the prisoners? She was the one who was the hostage that got burned to a crest. She's not dead, but she's in the med bay. But if she's not dead, that means she does not count towards that 10% deduction. <laughs> well, you guys already got paid for that, so... Um, what? Charity mission, kind of. um, no, instead of we saved the villagers, they'd give us like 50k or 20k and gave two up front. Well, yeah, uh, Annis and James had promised you that if you went back and helped um, help the people of Benyamin, that he would pay you another 20,000. Okay. That's true, yeah. So, hold on a second. You know I'm following the money. I'm the least greedy person in the party. My charity is well renowned. There are many, many people on safari ships. So this, um, this particular, um, uh, <laughs> No, I guess not. This particular uh, stateroom has been converted into the med bay. Um, ching Shi. What? Is over here. Beth, go ahead and make another medic plus. Actually, both Beth. Oh, hold on here. I already have, have those guys. Beth, make another medic plus intellect or education check. Fourteen. Okay. So. With the use of the med bay, you are able to save Amelia's life. And Ching Shi, make a medic plus intellect or education check. Oh, 
Eleven. Okay. So you're able to patch up as many of these townspeople as you want, and you see that this woman in the khaki pants is she's she's getting her hands dirty helping you patch people up. Just as just she's acting like she's one of you guys. And she uh you hear her so the the cargo airlock shuts and you hear her yell out she says shenanigans get us back to town and you can hear over the PA system you can hear the voice of the of the ship say yes ma'am ETA 10 minutes and the sh you can feel the ship lift off and head towards Benjamin and well, we, what about the Capri Sun the Capri Sun's still at the, the spaceport but she has told the ship to go back to Binyamin so that we can drop these people off first. And so she kind of collects all of you um, and brings you to the uh, the the common area. And uh, she she starts. She says, "Well, I I thank you all for." Um, for coming to rescue these people, um, and, and me, I, I, I really appreciate it. She says, my name is Dame Coral, Coraline Petrovsky. And she says, uh, out here in the Trojan Reach, most travelers are a bunch of hoodlums and ne'er-do-wells. Um, she says, uh, I, don't, I don't know where you fall on the spectrum, but you have my thanks. Let's do the flag waving for Drainax um, act that we did. Okay. Um, that whole thing. So <laughs> she that. she responds to that. She says, um, "Oh, you're you're with the uh, you're with the new kingdom of Drainax. That's I've heard about what's going on, what what King Oleb has planned, and um, she says, I honestly I would love to join his court, but I as of right now i have very little to offer him to gain a decent position which is part of the reason why i'm in the trojan reach she says uh as my title would suggest i am uh royalty or or i have a title um she says but my my family bloodline um can be traced back all the way to the Empire of Sindal and my great 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 grandfather um, was a duke of Sindal um, the problem is is that when the empire uh, went tits up as the case may be um we lost our ancestral holdings. And I have been searching for the planet that that he uh, ruled. And as of yet, I have been unable to locate this planet. It doesn't exist in the Trojan Reach, which I find to be impossible. Should we, should we tell her about the map? Well, it's what... what that might be what, it. Yeah, what would uh, finding this... this world, you know, give you? What exactly there is there that is such a great importance to you? She says, well, it really yeah, I'll claim the, the star dragon knight of Jagger still. She says, uh, she says, well, good sir, it really depends. I mean, for the most part, I, I would like to know where my family came from. Um, and that's just a personal matter to me, but if there's anything there, um, if, if I'm able to find, you know, a, a Sindalian cache or um, technology, you know, perhaps I could use it to gain favor with, with a court, either with Yggdrasil or um, uh, perhaps Drynax even, maybe even Birni. I don't know, but... <coughs> Um, whatever it is that I find, perhaps it would give me some leverage to to gain a seat at the table. I bet you could get a seat by donating this shit up to somebody. <laughs> Hold I mean, on. 
This is a really nice ship. She says, oh, this old thing? She says, she says uh, I purchased this from a... a uh, so I actually purchased this ship from a brakeyard. They were they were getting ready to scrap it, and I one of their technicians at the ship breakers uh, had purchased it and was modifying it. And he was actually quite a uh, genius uh, when it came to uh, computers and electronics, and claimed that <coughs> he had um, come across some ancient code um, that he used to program a conscious intelligence. She says, uh, the ship and I, I don't know if that's true, if the ship really is a conscious intelligence, uh, but we have an understanding. I wouldn't necessarily say we're friends, but we work together. Yeah, good enough for me. I like shenanigans. She, she was up and I learned how to shoot missiles. Yeah. I wouldn't right. get rid of her anyway. So I want to share something with her on the condition that she doesn't leave for the place without us. Okay. If this happens to be where she's supposed to go, I want to show her the map. Okay. Of the, yeah, because we're going there, and we don't really know if that's what's there or if it's the other thing. So. Okay. Yeah. So she. It is ancient Sandalian star chart. She takes a look at this, and she says, that's it. You know where the planet is. Um, she says that BTSHT-365 is the <coughs> scout designation, but this is from a <coughs> an old scout chart that an independent scout had made during the long night. Um, just after the fall of the Sindalian Empire. Um, she says that's all that she knows about the planet, but she had never seen an actual star chart. And she, she says, okay, so we're here on Homestead. Um, she says that we would probably want to uh, stop at Thalassa um, to uh, see if there's any, if, any further information about it, but at the very least, we could refuel at Thalassa. She says, I'm sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. She says, I would like to hire your services to, to take me to this planet with a stopover on Thalassa. And she says, um, as payment, since you like my ship so much, I will give you shenanigans as payment. Oh, wow. That's amazing. Love shenanigans. Okay. I mean, this ship That's is like worth... That deal. This ship is oh. worth hundreds of millions of credits. I mean, they, just the, the upgrades to it alone are astronomical. So, um, we were supposed to find some information about, like, the scientists that made that horrible bioweapon is that is there are they possibly there should we warn her at all that that's a possibility i don't know um i do i think we should be open and honest uh it, it, with the exception of selling nobles and stuff <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> might want to keep, yeah might want to keep that to yourself yeah um there's a queer heroes right now okay. yeah She hasn't heard anything about um, a bioweapons uh, specialist at all on Homestead or, and I mean, she spent some time here on Homestead in an attempt to find information on this planet. Um, she hasn't heard anything about it, but she's willing, you know, if we want to keep looking along the way, she's perfectly happy to do that. Uh, bioweapons don't concern her, she says. She's not like worried about it. All right, that's yeah. fine then. That's that's totally a great deal. Um, I mean, that's that's our mission, that. right? Is to to find this bioweapons guy, right? And try to get him out. 
But I mean, if you get a ship on like a side quest, if it happens to be a side quest, then that's like definitely worth doing. It'll help. This is a very nice, cool ship that talks. Yeah. Talking ship. Yeah. So. Really cool stuff. Beth and Ching Shi. Ching Shi, make a <clears throat> Do either of you have the diplomat skill? I have diplomat one. So, Beth, make a <laughs> diplomat plus social check. And, and I'll explain why in just a minute. <clears throat> Got a nine. That's excellent. So, with a nine, you seem to remember hearing something about um, in the past, you know, your, your uh, time in the Navy or in the Scouts, you remember hearing something about um, Coraline Petrovsky um, that, uh, that this woman is like 10th removed from Duke Norris of Regina of Deneb. Um, she appears to be in her late 60s. Um, some of the rumors that you heard is that not only is she 10th removed in line to uh, Duke Norris, but <coughs> you also um, remember hearing something about a uh, Regina noblewoman who was also a part of the Imperial Intelligence Bureau. Oh no, she's a kid. <laughs> <laughs> um, in the meantime, while well, you're you're kind of sizing her up, she tells you um, a bit of you know the history that she's trying to unlock um, about her family's past. Um, she tells you that Leopold Petrovsky was granted planetary land right by the Star Dragon Emperor of Sindal. Leopold was. I don't know why I'm getting called from Michigan, but all right. Um, she says, uh, Leopold was an admiral in the Star Guard and had proven himself on numerous fronts. His wife, five daughters, and three sons relocated to the Petrovsky ancestral home to build their palace. However, Leopold grew to be a just man and was frequently a thorn in the emperor's side. He opposed the emperor's heavy-handed rule and, a co and constant raiding of outlying systems. <coughs> it wasn't long before the emperor made an example of Duke Leopold. The emperor accused Leopold of sedition and made a decree stripping him of all titles and lands. In preparation, Leopold sent his daughters out on a Yuleng three-class destroyer, but he and his wife remained behind in the palace. The emperor of Sindal laid waste to the palace shortly thereafter. And thus began the fall of the Empire of Sindal. And throughout the centuries, the line of those five daughters intermixed with the royal lines of the Third Imperium. Four of those lines became dead ends, casualties of frontier wars and internal strife in the core world. Uh, Coraline's own great-great-grandmother was assassinated on capital, and many think it was because of her lineage. So this is kind of important to her uh, to find this plan, but like she said, she's, if, if you are amenable to it, um, you can crew this ship, and at the end, uh, when we get there, she says, the ship is yours. That sounds like an amazing deal to me. Looking forward to our adventure. Okay. So she... 
drop off those people and get paid though? Like, yes. That's the only other thing we need to do. Yes. And so, yeah, you drop the people off. Um, <laughs> you drop off Amelia with a bag of uh, gauze and some burn cream. Uh, the sheriff uh, is exceptionally happy to get his daughter back. Um, and uh, true to his word, he he wants to know nothing about the bank heist. Um, that is up to you and your gods, is the way he said that. He says that is up to you and Perer. You, however you want to uh, deal with that, that's on you. And he thanks you profusely for bringing back his little girl. Uh, the town. <coughs> They scrape together two tons of spares. Now, spares are parts that are used to repair your ship. Um, and he supplies you with those spares. And that's about the best that the town can come up with. I mean, they, they're they not rich in this town in any way. Should we take it? I don't know. Maybe they should keep that shit. It's all right. Like, <laughs> why, why don't we try to take... Why don't we take the shares and see if we can repair that power core? Yeah, was, or maybe they could. We could tell them where the ship is and be like, hey, there's a ship you could use all these spares on, and then maybe it'll be something good yeah. for you. Because we're set. Like, don't don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good, dog. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I like that. Like, get, get them a map or draw a map to the charred out ship with a warning. And then let them keep the parts to fix it. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, <clears throat> Binyamin, um, and that pretty much means homestead, uh, will now count as a haven for you guys should you ever need a bolt hole to set down and hide out. Awesome. The, the can town. We, can we park the Caprice in here? Oh, yeah. You certainly could. I mean, it would be safer around our friends watching it, you know. Maybe we could find them some nice pirate guns and shit that they could, they could be worth defending themselves. You know what I like about this ship? They actually thought ahead and put a, a bathroom on the, you know, right next to the bridge. That way you don't have to run, like, all the way through the corridors trying to get to the, to the head. Um, Does this have... This ship has, what, an air raft? It doesn't have a launch or nothing, though, does it? It does not, but it does have an air raft. Um, yeah, pretty nice. Yeah, it's, it, it, it is an all right ship. Um, in fact, I will bring it up again. This is it J2? Uh, this is an Empress Morava Far Trader. That would be J2. Yeah. But it's been highly upgraded, so maybe it could be J10 now. So here is its stats. <clears throat> Thrust 4 is real nice. J2, oh, this is a nice ship. Yeah, it's not yeah, quite as... definitely upgraded. Yeah, it's not quite as fast as, um, as the Capri Sun, but it... Uh, a lot of the stuff on here, this ship was clearly, at one point, some kind of smuggling vessel. Man, this this ship would probably be able to fleet up real nice with the Capri Sun. I mean, it's it's fast. With the, I mean, we've we've got a little more thrust than it. I mean, we've got better guns. Yeah, it does we, have three tons of concealed compartments. Yeah. It's, with its with its computer to watch our NPCs and be loyal to us, you know. Uh, I want to make so. a good impression so that the ship likes us. I think that's like the best thing we can do because if it doesn't want to work with us, it's going to go away. So yeah. let's find out what its morals are somehow. Uh, so well, I don't think the ship can jump without living people on board. That's true. That is true. Um, yeah, all attempts at having a ship jump by itself have failed. The ship never never reached the end. Um, so it still needs a living crew. Um, and it's like, you know, 
it's like she said, you know, they're not... She hasn't spent enough time trying to really work on getting to know shenanigans. They have a working relationship. She count, she would count shenanigans as she would any other employee. And she's not even entirely convinced that it's a real conscious intelligence. Shenanigans takes a little bit of offense to that and says that she is indeed... Um, Although even shenanigans will be the first to admit that she doesn't really know her origin. <coughs> um, she has very fleeting memory of her, um, of her creator. The other thing, um, so Ting, uh, now that you have access to the ship, any, when you, you kind of go and you're like, I'm sure that Ting would want to poke around the computer core and you know, see this this ancient code, um, and you don't you find a couple of lines of ancient code, which is very peculiar. They they write in hieroglyphs, um, and you find a couple of lines of it. But something like a conscious intelligence would be millions and millions and millions of lines of code. And you're not finding that. Um, you finally determine, um, with the help of shenanigans, is that the the code for the conscious intelligence is spread throughout the core and throughout all of the systems. If at any time that the, the, uh, the AI wants to, it can hide itself in any of the systems aboard the ship. Oh, so it's like really built into the ship. It, it is a it's core a, component it's like of the ship. It's hardware base. Correct. It's a hardware base, not a software yeah, it's thing. It's awesome. It's like how. It's like how. Yeah, it? yeah, a lot. Yeah, but as far as like uh, shenan shenanigans, um, I don't know how I would describe it. Awesome. <laughs> psychotic. I mean, it's like, I awesome know, in a psychotic way. Like, I'm sorry, I can't do that. Um, <laughs> so shenanigans, as far as like, so you wanted to determine its moral fiber. Shenanigans. Um, is excited by the idea of adventure um, and she identifies as a female she identifies as a she um, and she says that she um... <laughs> I said she identifies as a female and my, so this was my wife's ship in our campaign <laughs> from the other room I heard say yeah she does <laughs> so she she says that she, um, if you want to, I mean, I don't know how you want to ask her about her moral fiber, but she doesn't have a problem um, working with you guys. And, and that's exactly how she uh, states it, working with you. Um, she doesn't really view herself as property. She, um, she says that um, she would like... Um, a share, just like a crew member would get. Um, mm -hmm. And basically that share would be to upgrade components or um, perhaps, you know, she she really likes the idea of keeping spares aboard. She said she'd really like to keep like four tons of spares aboard, which are currently aboard her now. Um, that's kind of her minimum. Um, you know, in case she gets dinged up, she wants to be able to have a band-aid just like anybody else. Um, sure. And she likes the fact that you guys had enough of the moral fortitude to go back and help these people when they really needed help. So she appears to be um, generous and kind. Cool. So she goes on missions where we help people, and when we need to like do murder hobo stuff, we'll take the Capri Sun. <laughs> yeah. Um... <laughs> I mean, maybe. Um, so e you've got, uh, let's see here, 18,000. Do I have seven? So after you take, so you got, Anison James <clears throat> pays you another 20,000 credits. Take 2,000 off the top of that for King Olubs. Uh, that if we divide that by seven, uh, that gives each of you uh, 2,600 credits. 
but I'm actually rounding that up a bit. And with that business, and, and so you want to, so you're you're going to kind of park and throw a tarp over Capri Sun in Benjamin. Is that your idea? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, you jockey, <clears throat> you jockey ships around, and uh, you get Capri Sun kind of covered up, and you know, throw a, a camo tarp over it, and. <clears throat> The sheriff, Sheriff Van Tuck tells you that he's perfectly happy to keep an eye on your vessel uh, until you return and um, wishes you uh, Perer's blessing. Perer's blessing be on y'all. Um, and does the, does the G, GDC usually store its payroll for its port here at your bank? <laughs> <laughs> he says, actually, they did. <clears throat> um, he, do, he he doesn't know if that will continue to be um, procedure. Although well, it, took, he, it took an entire pirate raid to rob the bank the last time. Well, he we just said we couldn't get your money back for you after the pirates used it to burn the people that were cooking. That's kind of the direction he goes. He tells you he says, uh, "Who's who's to say who really robbed the bank? Maybe it was the Ogman Raiders." Yeah. Maybe maybe we were lucky that you just happened to be in town to help deal with that. Well, my my was thinking is is if the employees of the the GDQ I mean GDC uh, port are frustrated due to not getting payment, you know perhaps we convince them to leave and we could just auction off the port. Uh, you know. That may be something that could happen in the future. You know, we could, we could, we could sell everything that's there. You know, I mean, God, that would be that would be fun. Have an auction and get big time people to come in and buy all this stuff that's not ours. That could be a possibility in the future. Uh, that would be something that would take a little bit of time, though. Okay, well, I was just tossing that out there. Sorry. So. Uh, with all of that business complete, concluded, Coraline, um, <clears throat> Dame Petrovsky, I guess, if we're going to be formal, um, she wants to know if <clears throat> we are ready to head to Thalassa. So, I assume, Ching Shi, you'll be piloting. You are a better pilot than Shenanigans is. I will, I will give you that. Um, she has virtual crew member slash zero, so you know, um, Excellent. So I'm literally better than nothing. Well, you're you're literally better than the ship's AI, which, okay. you know. So you Speaking go ahead and make an astrogation, astrogation plus uh, intellect or education. Okay. And when we're in jump space, can shenanigans rig up some sort of missile firing simulation so I can practice? Yes, and yes. So. We're, Obviously, I need practice. <laughs> we are like two seconds away from that. Yeah, we might get like role playing awards for pulling off good stuff with stuff we're not familiar with. So, astrogation uh, check is eleven. Okay. Uh, Keith can make a. Uh, well, first of all, uh, Ching Chi, go ahead and make a piloting plus dex check. Okay. Oh, just barely. Eight. I think that might be my lowest piloting roll ever. Okay. Eight. So Ching Chi takes off, reaches orbit, and uh, gets herself through the uh, the debris field orbiting uh, homestead and uh, 68 hours later uh, you guys are approaching the uh, 100 diameter limit for jump and Keith can go ahead and make a uh, J drive uh, 
plus intellect or education check. I'm authorized to make this rule. Okay. Ooh, I didn't know that. 14. Mm. And you guys jump. So everybody, um, we're going to get some experience here. Um, if you have access to the Traveler Companion, which you all should, um, on page 39, <coughs> uh, it shows how to spend uh, skill point or experience points uh, gaining skills. You all get two experience points. Ting and Ox get a third experience point for good role playing and dealing uh, with shenanigans. Oh, hell yeah. Thank you. Let's see. So those, so those, I, those I spent all three of them on the same thing, that would get me to level what, two? So let's see. So on page 39 of Traveler Companion, uh, to take something at skill level zero costs one. Uh, if it, it, to take zero to one costs one. Uh, to take uh, skill level to from one to two costs two. From skill level three to uh, would cost four. So it exponentially increases, and all of those XP points have to be spent immediately. You can't save them okay. up. I understand. Okay. Then I am going to take. What is the two of them in unarmed combat? <clears throat> and. Are there any gaps we need? Put my recon up to one. I've spent my three points. Okay. Well, I got an sure combat one and yeah. That's a are there any gaps that you need? That's a good question. Um no, like okay. myself, I got Admin, this is at least uh, one or zero, would be admin, art, astrogation, broker, corral, deception, electronics, engineering, explosives, flyer, both gunners, gun combat, there's a lot, leadership, I think I might have done these wrong back in the past, in the way back machine, but there's no way of going back. No, you're fine where you're at. Yeah, we can't. I, I know. I I know. I don't exceed because we talked about the total. Right. So you can't yeah, exceed. That. Yeah, it is. Um, there. Did you say it was like thirty something? It is your intellect plus education. Time. I want to say times three is the maximum number of skill points that you could ever have. Yeah, that's like 66. I think I'm good. I um, did my gun combat because I end up doing that a lot. So that's what I did. Yeah, that's the call. Yeah, gun combat is a good one, especially with this leg of the adventure. You guys are going to see quite a bit of uh, gun combat. How much XP do you need to get something to three? To get something to three would cost four skill points. Dang it. No current three. This is going to be an epic adventure. Maybe there'll be more skill points at the end of it. Let's see. Mm -hmm. I think I'm going to go... I'm going to take explosives, too. Because I already had explosives one. So I'm using my two points for explosives, too. Okay. Uh, what do you do? Yeah. Weapon. Two. That yeah, would two. work. Obviously, one one of mine will go into uh, turret gunner. 
That's a good idea. Mm -hmm. That would give you I turret would... gunner zero. But, you know what? Let's put two there and get it to one. Okay, there you go. And then, uh... I guess I can take my back seat from zero up to one. Yeah, that would be a good one as well. Okay. Makes me more my ship useful. And Keith has recon two now. So okay. That's what he upgraded. Yeah, recon's another one that's... <laughs> I remember when we, were, when we were first starting out, like nobody had recon. <laughs> that's like playing D&D yeah. &D and nobody having perception. Yeah. That that could be rough. So, and I don't. Know. So I do have a picture. It's not very good, but this is Thalassa. Thalassa is a water world. Um, it is almost completely covered in oceans. And it doesn't appear to be bombarded by Aslan strikes? No. No. Um, the, the library, so shenanigans tells you that, um, uh, gives you a little, as you are making your way from the, after a week in jump space, you're making your way from the um, jump point to uh, Thalassa. You know, it's going to be, you know, 60 plus hours. Um, shenanigans tells you a little bit about the world. It says nearly everything on Thalassa is locally produced and almost all technology used is organic. One of the chief industries on Thalassa is snail farming. The sea snails can grow up to six meters in length <clears throat> and, for used, and are used much as beef or chicken is used on other planets. The shells of the snails are as strong as steel and have been developed into organic compounds <clears throat> that allow the thalassans to cut and weld the material as other cultures do with concrete and metal. Seaweed is cultivated for everything from plastics and clothing to food and medicine. While there are a few resources that cannot be obtained on the planet itself, the Lassa has a rich mining industry on the moons and asteroids of the system. Other items are traded with, for, uh, with off-worlders. The Lassa cities are uh, built on floating reed platforms that float across the ocean. <clears throat> and the planet is ruled by a group of councils, each one taking responsibility for a particular part of, of the Lassa society. Of these councils, the most important is the Council of Cycles, because the Thalassan cities float on these oceans, uh, on ocean currents at different speeds. It is important to know where each city it will be and how it will interact with its neighbors. A city may, may be in an area where it could run low on food, so the Council of Cycles would arrange for the transfer of food from a more prosperous city drifting into the area. Uh, the Council of Cycles uses weather and ocean currents to effectively run Thalassa's economy. Uh, this experience with anticipating and coordinating events has led to, to a talent for shrewd diplomatic maneuvering as well. Thalassan trade envoys are known to have their ear to the ground and every with every ruler in the subsector. Um, one important technology that they that the Lassens have brought off world is gene engineering. Uh, they gained genetic modification from the planet of Newman that allows some using, some humans to breathe underwater. These genetically modified humans belong to a special caste on Thalassa that many respect, but many more also fear them. <clears throat> uh as you're coming in, uh, the blue world of Thalassa gleams like a gem in the darkness of space. Even at this distance, you can tell that the entire planet is a large ball of water. Some minor traffic in the area heads towards or away from the planet. The bulk of the ships are seeker-type J-class mining ships heading for the asteroid boots, moon belts or the moons. While other ships are small type A-class free traders or a lumbering type R-class subsidized merchant. 
About halfway to Thalassa, the comms come alive with the familiar whine and static of Port Authority. Attention, SPX-442, Thalassa Spaceport has you on our scopes. Approach on Vector 5-2, you are clear to dock in Bay 25B. Be advised there that we are experiencing a bit of local weather. Welcome to Thalassa, Port Authority out. Very professional. So, as you <clears throat> come in <clears throat> through the cloud layer of Thalassa, um, and you're making your way to Thalassa's downport. And let me bring up, I have a map for this. <laughs> so this is Thalassa. As you can see, they have ice caps, uh, but pretty much the rest of it is all um, water. This is actually the starport. As you are coming in uh, through the cloud layer, you realize that what was described um, as um, local weather is actually a fucking hurricane. I mean, you can, you can see the clouds are in a big circular pattern. Um, Ching Shi, you need to make a piloting plus, you need to make three piloting plus dex checks. All right, three piloting plus deck check. Piloting plus deck check one. The first one is eight. Okay, go ahead and make your second one. The second one is eight. ten. Okay, and your last one. And the last one is thirteen. Okay. <clears throat> Who is on the bridge? I'm sure I am. And I'm sure, obviously, Ching, she is. Rexar, <laughs> uh, Rexar, where are you? I'm on my uh, Nintendo <laughs> Switch in my cabin. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're piloting remotely. Uh, Rexar, where are you at? Same tip as Ching Chi and the Demic Team. Okay, so you're you're at a weapons console on the bridge? Yeah. Okay. Where is Keith? Probably engineering, I would guess. Probably engineering, yeah. What about Ting? Um, well if all the stations are full on the uh, on the bridge, then I will be there... uh, serving everybody hot tea and refreshments. There okay. Uh, there is one other weapons console on the bridge. Um, Ox, did you want to take that? Sure, I'll take it. Okay, so that means Ting and Keith both need to make athletics dex checks, and it's going to be a difficult check. Oh, Keith rolled snake eyes. That's not good. Yeah, so it's only a four. Okay. What about Tang? Uh, I'm about to figure that out. Just one second. Here we go. Eleven. Okay. So, as the ship comes in to the this hurricane, Ching Shi, <clears throat> like the psycho pilot that she is, kind of surfs these clouds in a circular pattern as she's coming down to the port and the ship is bucking all over the place and she comes in and the back end of the ship kind of skips off the water as she's coming in for a landing and ting you're able you're in the you're in the common area kind of making your your tea and refreshments and you're jostled around but you kept you're able to catch hold of the uh, countertop. <clears throat> Keith, you take four points of damage. You're bounced around the engine room and a wrench falls on your head. Oh, I'll be alright. 
you <laughs> scrape your knuckles. <laughs> yeah, that yeah, well that's that is literally true. And the <clears throat> the storm is causing static to come through the uh <clears throat> come through and you land at at Thalassa Starport and it it's built in a ring on this big floating uh I mean the 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 base of this thing looks like a gigantic wicker basket is floating on the ocean. And there's this big starport that's built out of snail shell and it's two stories high. Um <clears throat> docking port 25B means that when you land the elevator will bring you down and move you into that port on the second level. And your your comms come alive says, "Whoa." And you hear static and then you we thought we lost you, SBX-442. Storms on Alaska can be a bit of a jolt if this is your first time dirt side. We're hoping everyone is okay. Do you need medical assistance at the docking bay? Over. I'm a doctor. Don't worry. <laughs> Everyone's okay. Affirmative, SBX-442. Welcome to Thalassa. And so you sat down and it lowers you down into the docking port and <clears throat> when you step out i mean this is a this is a nice port this is a, i believe it's class b let's see yeah it's this is a class b port i mean this is this is one of the nicer star ports you've been in um and when you step when you guys are meeting up um dame petrovsky she says oh we absolutely must go and check out the Travelers Aid Society Hostel. If there's any information from scouts in the area, or even other travelers, I'm sure that that is where we will find this information. And I can bring you in as my guest. I, I have a membership to the Travelers Aid Society. Sweet. I agree with that. Yes, yeah, she says we too. simply must go to TAS. The society may have information on this planet, and it simply isn't appropriate to not pay a visit. You don't have a membership? Rubbish. You can be my guest. Awesome. <laughs> we have a classy friend, you guys. <laughs> how did that happen? <laughs> yeah, how'd that happen? And that is where we will break for this week. All right. And we will pick it up <laughs> next week with... Um, all of the, I was going to say all of the shenanigans <laughs> that are going to happen on Thalassa. See you next week. Thanks, guys. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Have a good one, guys. I will see you next week at 7 o'clock. So, Chris, real quick, um, I want to add anti-missile to my battle dress. Okay. And then I have... I had a question about the, I have a note here about the multi-gun mount. Yes. Is that the, is that the integrated weapon mount uh, on page 37? Possibly. Let me take a look. Page 37. Let's see here. So what kind of gun did you want to mount? Well, I don't know. I, I wanted to put in the integrated weapon mount. So if you put in, so Rexar has an integrated weapon mount um, that he put in a heavy mount, which allows him to, uh, he's got a, um, it's basically a, a Vulcan chain gun. It's the, um, shit, hold on there find it and like what 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 i really wanted was the vehicle weapon mount but i don't have enough slots for that yeah those could take up quite a few um he has he has the rapid fire machine gun on page 125 um, okay which is a heavy um integrated weapon mount okay it takes up 10 slots so yeah yeah, it has, it's got 12, and then I wanted it to do the anti-missile, because it sounds like that can stop 
uh, grenades too. Yes. And then, so I got ten left. Yeah, you could do that. Might use every weapon. No. Okay, I'll take a look at that. Also, um, before I go, sorry, I'm like no, you're fine. Late. Um, the file that you loaded on the drive for Island of what's it call it? Iktaka, yeah. And it has nothing in it. It's like the folder, but the folder is empty. There are no files in it. Interesting. I will take a look at that and I will transfer over the correct files. There is absolutely no rush. What I'll do, I'll just go ahead and unzip it and dump into that folder. Maybe that was part of the problem. But yeah, I can take care of that. Okay. okay. All right. Cool. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. No problem. I will see you next week. Yep. See you next week. Bye. Bye bye.